Now we're down to just two players with a bomb down. Falsy finding three, four. Will we see the ace from Falsy this round? to Showstopper, the U Gaming Club's Collegiate Valorant Podcast. I'm your host, Gabriel Moncow, and as always, I am joined by my trusty co-host, Philip Tran. How are you? Great. I'm joining you from a place called 91 Bay State Road, Killershan Honors College. Not sure if you're aware of it, but it's a pretty nice place. Just down the street from me, it'd be nice maybe one of these days to do this in person, huh? Have us both in the same camera? I would love that, huh? Hey, Perhaps next Arona? semester? Jab me with mm. that j I'm looking for it. I'm actually so down for that. But to keep us company, since we don't have each other, we do have patch notes, Philip. Who could have thought? It's not like every time we do this, there is new patch notes, but you know. The time did exactly right. Every I know. Week, every two weeks, Ride is like, you know what? We'll give one to the boys. And these yeah. these are pretty big too. Like this isn't just like minor passion notes like we had last uh, time. We, we got some big boy pants to put on here. For sure, for sure. Two point oh six. Let's get over there, and you can walk us through it, Philip. All right. So I think the biggest change, honestly, here comes with Viper. Um, kind of a, a, a rework here. Her toxins are uh, now instantly give you fifty decay, and they decay to you to one health in ten seconds instead of fifteen. Uh, but once you get out of that uh, that toxin, your health starts to regen faster uh, from 2.5 uh, seconds previously to 1.5. There's also some rework with some of her abilities. For example, her Snake Bite, which is her Molotov. Uh, her equip time for that is decreased. Her Toxic Screen, which is like that, uh, well, basically her wall. It remains for two seconds after she dies. Uh, with her Poison Cloud, that's basically her smoke. It's able to be immediately be uh, redeployed when it picks up. And it remains for two seconds or until Viper runs out of fuel, and it can be picked from a little bit further away. So, a bit of a Viper rework going on here, making Viper a little more viable. Uh, in addition to that, some Yoru stuff going on, um, namely with uh, his blind side and his gate crash, as well as his alt. So, his blind side, that's his flash ability. Basically, the flash is activated faster and it lasts for longer. And with the gate crash, uh, which is his teleport, instead of granting it every two kills, it just gives you back that gate crash every 35 seconds. And that kind of portal lasts uh, now 30 seconds from the previous 20 seconds. Also, the range at, it, at which it's detected is now uh, less. It's originally 7 meters. Now it's 4 meters to be detected. And there's this like visual ring uh, so that you can see when the fragment is visible to enemies. Uh, his alt, dimens uh, Dimensional Drift, is now 6 instead of 7 alt points, and you can activate Gate Crash while you're in your alts here. And just That's big. Tiny little thing for Killjoy. Um, you can pick up her nades during 5 phase, but I will say That's this, nice. that has actually kind of messed with Killjoy in an unexpected way, which I can maybe bring up later. Uh, for sure. We Killjoy, man. To go over. We have the Bucky to go over. The Bucky! <sighs> They nerfed it. Everyone's favorite gun, no. right? <laughs> no, I hate playing against it, but I love playing with it. They decreased the spread on both the left and the right click, and they did a uh, update to the damage curve. So from 0 to 8 meters, it's 20 damage per pellet. From 8 to 12 meters, 12 damage per pellet. And beyond that, it's just 9 damage per pellet. But it really hurts. The right click is now reduced from 15 pellets to 5 pellets, which means at uh, normally you need to double click somebody to kill them if they have armor. It's a one click kill without armor, but it uh, two click kill yeah two click kill with armor, which is uh, uh, interesting. You can't one bop people anymore, unfortunately. Bucky's still as effective at, up close, but kind of a nerf from far away now. Yeah, and I think that's most of the big changes when it comes to, you know, competitive play and whatnot. There were a couple others to Escalation yeah. and little changes here and there. And then, of course, the hilarious um, April Fool's patch, which I don't think we really need to go over, but I would definitely take uh, a look at that if you I haven't. Mean, if you want to take a look at it, we obviously can. I mean, Brim Smoke's 100 seconds now, kind of competing <laughs> with Omen. Almost, Let's talk about it at the end of the show. Yeah. If we've got Thank time you. after, we'll definitely come back and talk about them because no they were way. pretty Dari sick. Noticed the cut. Yeah, it's fresh, bro. I don't even remember when I got this cut. Probably two, four, four weeks ago. Did I have this cut last podcast? I don't Can't think remember. so. I don't think so. No way. Dude, time flies. Straight time fresh. Flies. And there's, there's also um, HRTF, which is quite nice as well. The uh, yeah. uh, positional sound. And then I turned it off. <laughs> I can't get used to it. I'm like, 
You it's it's pretty nice though. Hey, I mean, it reminded me of CS where it just sounded like you had cotton balls in your ears until you got used to it. Yep, yep. It'll take some getting used to, but long story short, basically this should provide some more accurate sounds, which has been a big complaint of a lot of people um, in Valorant. So hopefully this helps. But yeah, no, definitely the focus of this update is going to be on those Yoru changes, those Viper changes, and the Bucky changes. So why don't we talk about them um, one at a time now that we've sort of gone over all the changes. Let's roll it all the way back to the one that probably most people are interested in, which is the Viper changes. Uh, Viper controller, right? Am I insane yep. to think? Yeah, she's a controller. Yep. Is definitely one of the least used agents, certainly least used controller um, in the game. I... I mean, I, for one, there's times when you go up against a Viper and you just feel so oppressed by someone who can really use Viper utility well. But that's a rarity, I think, even in high-level play. Um, so for a long time, people have been asking for a rework to look at Viper again and say, how can we use her differently? Because she's just not really ever going to yeah. surpass like a Brim or an Omen in raw smoking, for example. So this is quite an interesting change. Uh, what do you think of it, Philip? Yo, before the patch, Viper was a complete troll pick. If you picked Viper, I don't care what you say. You could be the best Viper in the world. <laughs> but I'd rather have any any other smoke character. Viper's just not as versatile. Um, her utility in the past couldn't really... Like, once you put down your wall, it's there. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, same with her, mm. uh, her smoke, basically, and some of her other, other utility. It just didn't really make sense because there's no versatility to it but now that her stuff does damage that, that's very like like 50 or not damage but decay like instantly you go into any for utility instant 50 decay that is pretty mm -hmm. powerful and on certain maps such as icebox where you can do these like like long walls and just cut off the entire parts of site and attackers need to push through them uh, I mean, you can use it on the other side as well, and, like, defenders need to push through them, and they're instantly tagged with 50 damage. That is pretty powerful. I, I will say it doesn't make her a best pick overall, but on some maps, she could absolutely work now. Um, yeah. I, I think she's less of a troll pick. No, I agree for sure, and I think... I mean... <sighs> What's interesting about Viper is that she's always had this this unique sort of position uh, in the agent field that I don't think many agents have, which is you can kind of use her to gain access to a very specific area if you want to, for example. If you know the lineups and you know you're going to hit this one site fast, for example, and you just want to clear these angles, if you know exactly which angles you want to clear and you have the lineups for it, she has always been one of the most effective characters in the game at getting people out of those angles and nullifying where you can get shot from. Problem is, like... If that doesn't work, like let's say you lose the opening fight, for example, all of her stuff is just gone. Like it's all out there, you can't get it back, and now she's just a paperweight for the rest of the game. So it's it used to be a really high risk, high reward thing, but now I feel like she's even better at sort of just gaining control around the map like this. And because her abilities individually are more powerful, you might not need to commit as much of her abilities in one place to get control of a specific area like that. So I'd be really interested to see, for example, do you think it'll be viable now to use, I don't know, her her Viper's Pit, for example, to flush people out of angles? Because before, like, you could kind of sit in there for a little while and, and be okay. Um, or at the very least, because the range of it is small, you didn't have to be too worried. You could just kind of leave. Do you think maybe you can use a smoke aggressively, for example? Will we see more aggro Vipers? <laughs> aggro Viper. That's going to be interesting. I am still concerned about where Viper fits into most teams. I don't think Viper is as versatile as other smoke characters. I agree. But, you know, basically making an enemy, like, basically making it, like, like basically nullifying armor, that's pretty powerful. And for more aggressive plays where you want to cut off, like, uh, an angle and prevent enemies from pushing, because, you know, enemies are going to push through smoke, no problem. Mm -hmm. The only thing that... Ha the only thing that it really prevents them from pushing through smoke is they can't see what's happening but viper her smoke now like her poison cloud or, or her wall now you take you take decay damage so it would yeah. discourage pushing through a lot more and it, in ex some experience i haven't played that many games with viper on the other team it's made me think about pushing things you know like not pushing through smokes as much um I haven't seen enough Viper, I think, to see like if this is a completely viable strategy. Uh, I think a lot remains to be seen. I wonder if pros will actually pick up Viper anytime soon. 
It's it'll definitely be time. interesting. And actually, I mean, the point that you brought up just uh, just about the smoke being, um, for example, way more pow- way more damaging now. I mean, it's the classic age old saying in games like this in CS, right? Which is smokes aren't walls. You can walk through smokes. But for most of the smokes in the game, there's very little downside to walking through it. Uh, this this changes things a lot. Do you think we could actually see people using poison clouds now as a means to kind of permanently block off an area? Especially since Viper can theoretically keep that yeah. up for way longer than any other character smokes. Uh, Chad is saying that my audio is getting quiet randomly for whatever I did reason. buff it a little bit. Hopefully that'll help. Um, All right. Yeah. Anyways, I'm just standing a little close to the mic. Anyways, um, I think her poison cloud is kind of a powerful thing especially because you can pick it up now and especially yeah. because even after she dies it remains for two seconds at the most um mm-hmm. it's definitely one of those things that is 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 more than just a smoke now it's it's more of a deterrent to like uh, pushing through angles and i think teams are going to end up respecting it more yeah and i think i think the most interesting thing is we're we're talking like smoke right it's a smoke it's a smoke I can't think of a single smoke that you really play around just like the one smoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times on sites, you might have like a two smoke execute and that blocks off the main choke points. You don't really play around those two smokes. They're just there so you don't die yeah, from yeah. those choke points. Because this thing lasts for so long and people can't really sit in it or push through it as much. Do you think we'll see executes where you actually play around a one smoke and like putting it up and taking it down and moving it a little bit? Or <laughs> do you think that's possible? Because that totally changes the game. <laughs> that would be crazy quite something you know like imagine split uh, for some odd reason you know smoking out the vent and then picking out that up and then go and doing the same thing to smoke out heaven or something like that would be pretty cool to see uh, especially in combination with the viper wall like these teams just trying to desperately like retake a site and they're taking 50 damage yeah off the bat yeah I, it's exciting uh finally viper can do something and teams and Viper actually being more versatile now. Yeah, and I think the other thing to consider as well is that 50 decay instantly. <laughs> how do we think that could combo with other things in the game? Like, for example, like getting vulnerable no. by either Killjoy or like uh, Astra, Astra, for example. Sock. Could you Astra have, sock. yeah, could you have a Sova with a shock arrow, a, um, a, Sorry, you can't break you can't break poison clouds, right? Like on the floor? No, you can't. Yeah. So they could just... you just have a viper just stick that on the bomb and just wait? And as soon as they tap it, a, sh- a shock arrow lands. Astra like pulls them in, so they're vulnerable, and her cloud goes up. You lose fifty health immediately. You're vulnerable. You get one shot by the arrow. That's so funny. Is that possible? Like that sounds Might absurd. Well, dude, just keep adding the insult to injury. You get tripped by the cipher. Yeah, you know, there's you get a the bomb in there. Turned, yeah. and you no know, breach ulted. <laughs> and flashed <laughs> just get a nade just could you, know, you imagine there. like suddenly yeah. that's terrifying though because i don't think there's anything else in the game that can basically yeah. immediately take you down to a one shot from certain from like a vulnerable thing i think it makes like viper so much better with uh post plants here yeah like especially that because you take damage and you're vulnerable vulnerable from her uh from her toxin you throw in those snake bites you know like oh they're a goner like for sure for sure. I think, yeah, I mean, that's, it'll be super interesting to see how Viper plays. Uh, I guess so we don't spend too long on just one thing because we do have quite a few other things to cover. Yeah. Um, let's just close out Viper with like, are you thinking of picking up? Do you think the B team will pick it up? Is that a possibility? Um, I don't know a single Viper player, so. <laughs> <I don't laughs> maybe Dari so. in the chat can tell us if he's uh, thinking of on. picking it up. I yeah, know. I mean, I, maybe. <laughs> Maybe for next year, guys, if we uh if we uh, run tryouts and there's like this immortal viper that comes in, I'm not gonna. That's say no. terrifying. That's but... nightmare fuel right there. Immortal viper. Like I kind of want that on my wall as like my title. I don't. That's really terrifying. Know. It, I mean, how many people do you know seriously play viper that aren't silver? None. The closest I've ever seen exactly. to someone seriously playing viper that's not silver is there was one match last semester with the A team, where we basically said. Uh, Falsia basically went, it was the best of three, right? First two ma- it was like Ascent, Haven, Inferno, I almost said Inferno, Ascent, Haven, Split. 
right? Um, Inferno. Could you imagine? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of good maps, silly me. Um, uh, Ascent Haven Split, right? And Falsia basically went, hey guys, can we lose the second map so that we can play Split and I can main Viper? And we all just went, nah. And then we did lose the second map and he did play Viper and we lost. Actually, I don't remember if he actually played Viper, but I remember we, we did not do very well in Split. So that's the closest we've ever come to seriously close. playing Viper. That was in an official, that wasn't even a scrim. Um, and it was kind of a meme, so I don't wow. I don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, I mean, it's gonna be tough. I mean, uh, let's just say Viper. At this point, Viper has been in the game for a long time, but now with this rework, she's basically a new agent. Anybody who seriously plays like the game and is good has just basically doesn't play Viper. So we're going to have to see the meta develop with like and the player base adopt a Viper. As these changes are being adopt, like as these changes have uh, rolled out, and as people for sure try to pick her up and, and implement her in teams, yeah. And I guess the other agent that we've never spent this long just looking at a patch note and talking about it. Um, mostly we just kind of move on, but Yoru. a lot of these changes are kind of technical enough that we have to show them. And I mean, Yoru. For people that don't know, Yoru was, you know, a fairly new character here. I'll scroll back up so we can look at his Yo, stupid face. I can't believe we thought Yoru was broken. <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> what episode was that, Philip? Was that like like episode four or something? I gotta search this up. I'm pretty Find sure it. it was episode. It was episode two. Two? <laughs> wow. We're on episode seven now. But anyway, so if you look back at episode two, you'll see us talking about how back then it was when Yoru was added to the game. So that makes it like what two months ago, maybe three. Um, yeah. And. Essentially, Yoru's whole gig is he can teleport around, he's got some flashes, and he's a duelist, but it, it, he plays differently from the other duelists. It's more like you're meant to win fights with positional advantage and get a pick, get out, like, <laughs> oh, outplay your extra enemy. Steps, slow. Uh, yeah, so, kind of sounds like just kills with extra steps, I don't know. But that was how they were. he was intended to be played, and his major thing um, was basically his gate crash ability and his alt. Uh, gate crash being where he can put out this little orb thingy, uh, which makes moves forward in one direction until it kind of gets stuck in a corner somewhere and it lasts for like 40 seconds or something and unless you're right next to it it's visible 30 it seconds 30 now it used to last for 20 okay it lasts 30 now short if you think about it like, yeah 30 is pretty good it felt like 40 honestly but i guess that's just the pace of the game Bro, um feels like 40 Dude, it, when whenever i, I try to use yoru before i could even think about gate crashing that, that was <laughs> it gone. was gone like it was literally um, gone but anyway, so yeah, you'd throw that thing out, it'd be kind of invisible, it would last for a little bit, it would make a noise if you got close to it, and then you could teleport to it, uh, and it would yeah. sort of put you in this weird animation where you couldn't shoot, and it was a little annoying. But anyways, everybody at the start was like, holy crap, this man can just like teleport across the map, nothing personnel kid, like suddenly behind you, and he can flash, and he's got like these fake footstep things, broken. and it's, it seemed like it was going to be kind of broken. Um, basically, <laughs> I have then... not played against a single Yoru in I think over a month. Um, I think apart Yoru's from completely useless, that's not true. In BU versus BC, uh, we had a Yoru versus Yoru, and it did not go well for yeah. Me. I mean, um, that's because Yoru is basically dead weight. Yeah, so I mean, he the definitely. Only time I do it, only time I ever see Yoru is in unrated for fun. He's also like okay on certain maps. If you know the lineups, for example, to get your TP into spawn on ascent or something like that, you can kind of play around him. But he typically fell off the face of the earth, being one of the characters that everyone thought was going to be most OP. I definitely think he's the agent in the game that at launch, com compared to without any changes made, compared to now, is like totally fallen off uh, their yeah, high wars. I think so. So this is a, a bit of a nice yeah. rework that they've brought out. Um, do some changes here, huh? Yeah. What do you think of them, Philip? So, I already went through the changes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah we talked about them, but let's go um, into how you think it'll actually change how he plays. He's still useless, bro. Come on. <laughs> still useless. think he's terrible? Yeah. Uh, I don't really know if he's going to be any more useful. Uh, his gate crash. I mean, I guess it's... Okay, it lasts longer. You have more opportunities. You have more of them. Uh, I still don't think he's that useful, honestly. Like, compared to any other agent with this, like, set of abilities, like, I'd rather pick pretty much anybody else that takes a fight head on and is able to, like, initiate a fight than Yoru, honestly, because I, I really can't see him being worked into any lineup. Yeah, from a, a team duelist. perspective, like from a team a... perspective, I definitely agree. Like, I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to see a lot of duelists start switching over to Yoru because of this or anything like that. And I don't Maybe. think a lot of teams are going to plan executes around this, really. Um, I, But I will say, 
from at the time of you know us making the second episode i played yoru quite a bit because i was trying to plan out or i was trying to get clips actually for us to show on stream turns out i suck i couldn't get any clips but um i was trying to play yoru quite a bit and what i remember from my time in yoru was basically kind of what you said like if you could use your gate crash effectively if you could time it right if you could you know use it to its fullest extent you could be a force to be reckoned with but typically you couldn't do that his flashes are mediocre his footsteps or his fake fake steps are very you know situational so it was basically all about that gate crash when i played so this change from 20 to 30 seconds in itself is already pretty massive i think yeah. the change furthering that that you can get another one in the round for free is really interesting and here's why he is a duelist which means he's self-sufficient but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's just a straight up fragger everybody and i agree with this i'm pretty sure he was built around this thought that he yeah. was going to be played as a lurker sort of character and that's what's great about your you can fake stepping one way you can tp that way you can flash for yourself but if you need to get kills constantly to replenish your gate crash it's a lot harder to be a lurker whose role is typically to get like one or two kills and you're probably expending most of your util picks, to get that. basically yeah exactly so if you no longer need to kill people to get gate crash your gate crash lasts longer those two together i mean and it's like harder to see because you know the range at which you can radius, you can yeah. see it is is farther in that suddenly makes it a lot easier to use i think and makes him a much more intriguing lurker so if you need to fill a lurker role on your team i think yoru is suddenly a viable option if you need to fill a duelist role You're down eh, for it. not very no. much and if you need to fill a flasher role then like definitely not me like he's not Bro, even a I top mean, two flash in the game i don't i don't know what your what role your actually plays in a team comp if you wanted a lurk just, there's an omen for a reason he's right yeah there. that helps too i mean and he has smoke so you don't have to waste you know a slot on a on a lurk like a dedicated lurk and then like if you want flashes breach is better i mean at flashes if you want to entry any duelist is better at him yeah than phoenix entry. right so, now yeah he falls in this really weird slot and i think you have to be you have if you're thinking of a team comp you have to be very particular in why you want a yuru like he doesn't exactly fill anybody else's role so you have he kind of just fits in his own play style almost yeah i do think i do think it's definitely possible though this is one of those interesting um buffs where it's kind of low-key it's hard to tell where it'll go right um i don't think this is gonna make him as busted as he seemed like he was gonna be at the start definitely not i'll make him better i mean these are all yeah things that'll definitely make it easier to play yoru and maybe even easier to play with your team especially with that gate crash having you know maybe your first gate crash kind of fa fails just wait a little hit another site with your team and like tp on as a way yeah. to initiate a fight while they're distracted you can stab them from the back yeah for sure and i think i think what'll be cool about this is because it's not going to make him totally busted we're not gonna i mean maybe at the start we'll see an onslaught of people going back to yoru like you know we'll go back to the the calling of like oh yoru's busted nerf him uh but i think in the long term if they sort of keep these changes where they are yoru is going to become a specialist agent he's not going to become totally useless where it's like oh we have a yoru on our team and he's also not going to be busted at all it's going to be the kind of thing where if you come up against a good yoru it's actually a good yoru but it's rare that you see anyone try it which i think is good i think that's a cool agent to have in the game what do you think i think so unfortunately probably not gonna make the most common picks tier list but yeah maybe he'll have a he'll have a slot in the game for some certain players with that very particular style of playing i agree and while we're at it as well just to close out the patch notes you mentioned some things about killjoy as a killjoy main is this a nice little uh quality of life improvement for you i mean i guess so if i change my mind and don't want to put my nades one place i can pick them up and that's pretty cool but is what that... I did notice, though, yeah. is in order to accommodate for this change, they changed the like they changed how you have to activate the nades. Like you have to look more directly at the nade now to activate it. Oh, and does that mean lineups I, are harder? Uh, no. It just means that you just have to look at the like where the nade is with the icon like more directly. Right. Okay. Which is can be a problem if you're like aiming at something and you need to like kind of move your mouse and like aim a little more directly at the nade to activate it and i've been boned multiple times because i just forget this is a thing and i try to activate my nades they don't go off and i get yeah. steamrolled uh so i'm it's still something i'm trying to get used to uh For kind sure. of unfortunate i i wish riot would 
change it back. It's either this is actually true or I'm tripping hard. <laughs> uh, and it's always been this way. But that's something I noticed when I was playing Killjoy. Um, and I mean, for an agent that I play basically 99 out of 100 matches on, I would be, I would hope to think it's something that I can, like, is I can notice. Yeah, um, and I think I think this change is kind of low key, but it might actually have a significantly bigger impact than it might seem at the start. And here's why. And you can tell me more, obviously, because you're a primary sentinel and I'm not. Um, I think a lot of the times when you play a sentinel, let's say Killjoy, for example, right? You kind of have to decide early on whether you're going to put down your nades to stop them from taking sight or if you're going to use your nades to in post to like either retake or to deny plant or something like that. Yeah. You no longer really have to do that. Um, we might now see a default situation where people always put out their nades to sort of deny plant slash stop them from taking sight. And if they take the other sight, great. You walk over, pick up your nades, and now you have two uh, nades you that you can retake with. You can't with. pick up your nades. What? You can't pick up your nades. It's only during buy phase. Oh, okay, never mind then. Ignore everything I just said. I thought this was during game phase. That would have been crazy. No. Could you okay. imagine if, if you could pick if, them up during game phase? Oh, dude. A Killjoy S plus plus dude. That's literally what I thought they did. I was like, why no, is no, nobody no. talking about this? This is insane. This is totally no, busted. No, no, no. If that was the <laughs> case, like there is no chance anybody's playing Cypher anymore. Because like you can just you could just retake like and hold sites with Killjoy. That would yeah, be absurd. I mean, Dari in the chat did say that it's definitely worse now for popping nades, and it's not, not intended. Oh, is it? It's not so, intended. Okay, so they might I'm fix it then. It's not. So I'm not. I'm not tripping. It's actually true, and I really hope they fix it because it's really annoying. <laughs> right like every time i'm trying to hold some angle and i need to look look off of where i'm going and pop my nades it's annoying but yeah if anyway. that was the case as you mentioned <laughs> yeah that okay. sounded crazy to me yeah no, no that's crazy um, i did notice something with killjoy now that i'm playing at higher levels yeah i'm putting so i used to use my nades more to deny sight i use them more to deny, deny plant now Okay. So and like I put my utility back and I play off of it. Especially yeah, like on so bind, weird. there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Like yeah. inside I mean, the depends. tube on like on pistol rounds or, or like anti eco. I'll do it to deny deny sight mo most of the time. But I, I kind of right. switch it up. You kind of have to at uh, at a certain point. Like if you keep running the same default setup, they're just gonna steamroll it somehow. Especially with raises, they always love blast packing everywhere and destroying your stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's been some. That's been one of the challenges uh, I've I've been facing playing Killjoy. Um, especially with raises who know where Killjoy utility is, they'll just blast pack right through and just bonk you in the head. Yeah, yeah. And I actually kind of forgot about the weapon changes when I said we were going to close out with Killjoy. So let's talk about that for a sec as well. The Bucky. Uh, the Bucky, no. for people who do not play Valorant or are sort How of new to the play? podcast, is uh, it's sort of like the devil spawn of, of, of Valorant. Um, it is essentially the cheapest non-secondary, like cheapest primary gun in the game. Um, so not a pistol basically that is far more powerful than its price tag would suggest uh, for I think it was $900 right you can essentially yep. one shot headshot one at shot. close one to medium range um, one shot with armor and yeah like, no questions asked They're and it's got it. the versatility too where you can switch between left and right click to shoot sort yeah. of like a tighter spread and kill somebody one shot body shot close with armor um, or one shot headshot at sort of medium range with the right click yeah. So there, this gun basically was an extremely powerful shotgun broken, for a very low broken. price. Yeah. And um, as you can tell from these numbers, I'm going to zoom in so we can appreciate. I kind of want to put like some dramatic music because this is just the death of the Bucky, right? Like this looks terrible Reduced for amount it. amount of pellets in a right click shot from 15 to 5. That's the big change that I would love to highlight. Yikers. I don't yeah. think it makes the Bucky useless, completely useless, but those one shots from far away aren't happening anymore. It's going to be a two shot meat shot uh, at minimum. If this is considering all your pellets hit the person, you need uh, the first time around. So it's, it's, it's tougher. Like I believe those five pellets can do, yeah, so 20 damage per pellet. So we'll do 100 and you need to hit him another time. So it's going to be two shots to take somebody down with armor. Which, you know, is is more balanced. But I kind of miss having an OP shotgun on uh, to use on attack side. Okay, That's as an omen main, I used to love it. I used to yeah. love playing the yeah. Bucky close let's to just, smokes. Let's just compare this game to CSGO. I gotta say, the shotguns in CSGO were like mega super, like super situational. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're only really effective CT side, I'd say. Yeah. Like, the sawed off should not exist as a weapon, <laughs> but it does. It's just, just such a troll pick. Um, 
I, I kind of appreciated having like a more versatile shotgun, the Bucky, for example. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it makes the gun completely useless. It just makes it more balanced. I agree. Like, the left click is still good. It's still going to be a one-shot meat shot right up close into your face. But from far away, you're not winning those duels anymore if they have a rifle. Yeah, I think, I mean, it was definitely getting kind of absurd when you would see people have multiple accounts in Radiant and one of them would be called, like, Bucky God or something. Bucky <laughs> yeah, Bucky they, would, God. they would Bucky only to, like, high, high levels. Um, that's kind of absurd. But yeah. I, I do think this is kind of going to end the Bucky era. Like, it's still going to be a gun you see occasionally if somebody can use it really well. But I do think we've kind of, it's going to fall out of, you know, general Bro, mention. Why are, they, why are they screwing over all the guns I loved using? First, the yeah. Stinger. The stinger, I'm not. I dude, I don't think I'm by the stinger anymore. Like the the meta used to go from like if you won first round, it's like stinger's armor, right? Now it's specter's armor. Like this game is just getting more and more expensive. Gabe, what are they gonna do? They're gonna nerf the specter? <laughs> I I don't know, man. Like yeah. it's gonna be AK no armor uh, for the for the meta now. Damn. I think end of an era. I think we should honor. I think we should honor the gun with the proper send off. Um, let's see if I can queue up some, some sad music here, um, and a world. compilation. Uh, no copyright, no copyright yeah, of course. music. A compilation of what the gun used to be as we say goodbye to the Bucky. Wow. Um, here, I'll share sound so you can hear it too. That oh, you're probably not going to be able to hear it, but it's okay. No, it's let's, fine. let's just say goodbye to the Bucky. Just look at this gun. Amazing weapon. <sighs> Moment of silence. $900. You can tear somebody's face off. Yeah, there is uh, something with um, shotguns. I'm not sure many players realize, but you know how you want to aim for the head in Valorant most of the time with the shotguns. You actually want to aim for the body because it's about how many pellets hit the the uh, the enemy, not yep. about like getting a headshot. Anyway, yeah, yeah. F's in the chat. Moment yeah. of silence for the Bucky. It will be dearly missed. Um... It was absurd. It was ahead just... of its time. Here, let's say, let's say a few words, Philip. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just start and just say, I, I knew the Bucky well. The Bucky kept me warm on the cold nights. The games where I couldn't frag, where the enemy was better than me, I could still kill them routinely, no matter how much better than me they were. Because every round I had a buy and the Bucky made sure of that. The Bucky was there for me when no other gun was. <laughs> I'm going to miss him. I remember in late summer, it was a scent. And I had with me a modicum of credits. And what did I spend it on? Utility? No. Armor, perhaps. I could not bear the thought of it. But $900 for a Bucky. It was the sweetest purchase of my life. That fateful day on a scent holding down B site, the single choke point dividing us from the onslaught that would ensue. And it was me soloed site with a $900 gun. And I died right away because I missed the first shot. I'm sorry. I'm just so bad with shotguns at this game. <sighs> but the Bucky, hey, if I can hit my shot, it's, it's one of those weapons. I wonder if the, the uh, clips will be as insane. I mean, you have to hit a person twice now, right? So maybe the Bucky will be played in a different way. Where Hopefully, it's like, this is not you, the end of the Bucky. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be like one peak, and then like you like counter strafe and like super fast peak again. It's just like a nice... Sh I, I don't know what it could be. But this is definitely the end of an era. I mean, I'm still using the gun. It's just you need to shoot the boy twice instead of once. Okay. I think that's enough of that. The sad music goes away now. We have said goodbye to the Bucky for proper copyright. This is this was a video made by uh, Quirky Quirk Quirky or something. Can I can I can I scroll down so you guys can, this this person on 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 YouTube. So feel free to check them out if you want to watch more satisfying Bucky taps. The sad believe, the sad yeah. piano music is not included. I cannot believe nine. Okay, so seven people listen to me talk about the Bucky. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, what a gun, huh? It's It definitely was a staple for its time. Do we think, I guess while we're on the topic of those guns, and then we'll pivot into some other stuff, do we think there's any other guns in the game that are particularly over or underpowered that we would like to see changes to? 
I have one um, in mind. <laughs> the shorty. The shorty is stupid if you're like a jet or like a raise. The, yeah. The shorty is only useful for basically mobility agents. Yes. So I mean, I guess it can stay the way it is. But I wish the frenzy wasn't just a complete mess every time you sprayed with it. That's all. For five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. I will pick the ghost up every single time because I get the two tap on somebody. Like tap in the head, tap in the body, you're done. With the frenzy, I'm just gonna miss the entire thing. I'm not gonna be honest. I'm just gonna miss the entire thing. <laughs> Yeah, I never liked the the stinger, the frenzy, but like the stinger was good, but now it's just too it's too expensive and like just all over the place, which is unfortunate. I agree. Um, I mean, you can still use the stinger, just you gotta be up in somebody's face to use it though. Um, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I wish it was like more of like an MP9 instead of like yes, MP Bison, you know. Like, yeah. I love the MP9 CSGO. That's what the Stinger should be. Or even the but, Mac-10. I mean, they're both, like... Mac-10 sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. Now you want to bring running gun into the game? Uh, <laughs> I know people down, love but... that. Yeah. Um, no, but what I will say is the gun that I don't understand, and I, I hate the way it's implemented, the is the op. Thing. It's the okay, op. op. Interesting. I don't think it's over or underpowered. I know a lot of people, especially early in the game, right? I don't think the op has seen any changes, basically, since the game no. started. Um, even since other beta. Than the, other than... Actually, it's seen one change, a price increase from 45 to 5, right. 5K. And then the movement fair. speed. And the movement speed. Right. But I think at the start of the game, like people really tentacle. people really hated... Oh, is there an ad playing? <laughs> I don't know who did that, but... Um, there is uh, one... There, there was one thing at the start of the game that everybody kept saying, right? You know, Jet with the op, Jet with the op was absolutely mm -hmm. absurd. Um, but it's still, it's still kind of, you know, definitely the most the most effective way to run the gun, but you can yeah. kind of use it with a lot of a lot of different characters. What I hate about the op and what I don't understand, and again, this is coming from someone who has 4,000 hours in Counter-Strike, so you can see where my bias lies, is that, um, ah, the ADS, thank you, Dari, not ads, ADS, is that you can't move at all while shooting with it. So you can't really clear angles. You can't combat op, really. You can basically just like, what you have to do is you have to clear every single angle that you're coming across with the intent to shoot if there is someone there. If you don't clear an angle properly and there is someone there, you can't flick to them. You can't recover in time. If you're moving at all, your shot is gone to the moon where GME never got to. It, it unfortunately Whoa, is unrecoverable. Found, Listen, found it could still get there. It could the still get there. He's right here. Come get him. <laughs> it could still get there, but... I, I hate playing it that way because that's one thing that I loved about CS is you can use the op in that combat op style. You can get up in their face. You can even like contact smokes and stuff like that with this gun. Here it's it rewards patient play. It rewards sitting back. It rewards kind of holding angles. And I I mean, it's okay, but that's only half of the usefulness of the op in CS. And I feel like they're totally neglecting the other half. So I would love to see just a slight, it doesn't have to be a lot, just a super slight increase to accuracy when moving. Just make it so you can move like a little bit. It could even be like crouch moving levels of like speed. Just make it so yeah. that you can like move and, sh and shoot when you stop with the op. Because it's kind of absurd otherwise. Ha, huh, Gabriel, don't you know that it's very unrealistic to be able to shoot and move with a sniper rifle? Anyways, I'm joking. I would yeah. kind of like to see other agents be able to use the op in a more offensive capacity here. Um, the op as it stands is very hold angles, get kill. You can peek with it. It's it's more difficult. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, Kenny S. Do you really do you really want to go into those days of like oh I'm just no listen we're not talking like 1.6 AWP here like I mean the movement speed back then used to be crazy like Markalov we're gonna bring him back um but but no I I, I would like jumping, to see a change jumping head <laughs> just jumping collapse all over the place yeah I, no not about that, that. Those, those are the days of CS anyways back to Valorant um yeah I I don't know how it's gonna I wonder if it would really it wouldn't end up. I think it would end up uh it wouldn't end up affecting you know agents like jet uh that movement yeah like, like just that movement but it would make like retaking with op a little easier uh we would make generally peaking with angles op easier i wonder if that has any implications for pro, pro play like i think the op would really get used a would, lot if they it did would this make change the op basically it would give, it would be kind of op to use yeah, I wonder if that's what... 
I wonder if, uh, how that would make the game play. Well, because what's interesting about that is like it's already more expensive than CS than the CS op, and in CS the op isn't OP. So I think what the difference is is the game. Especially the difference is this is Valorant, not CS. That's true. That's true. But it's also just kind of like in CS in pro play when you're making an actual like when you're thinking about team comp, you need an. Uh, well, you don't need, but most teams will have an opper, like somebody who's dedicated, really seen, good at the yeah, opper. I haven't seen a team without an opper, honestly. Like the op is almost yeah essential. Yeah, in Valorant, like you, you don't really go out and search for like an op player. You might look for like a jet, and they can double up as your opper, but yeah. you don't really look for somebody that's good with the op. Um, yeah. So that might be a difference in Would like. Would you like prevalence. to see a more sniper, like having like an opper as a, a staple of most teams, or would you like this more rifley? kind of meta that we got going on i don't i mean i'm super biased i've got more kills logged on the op than any other gun in cs by a substantial margin it's literally a um, point and click adventure i remember is. back in gold nova lobbies just sitting in there and people like yeah the op taking snow skill it's point and click adventure you know yeah and i think at least in valorant it's harder to use the op not sure if that makes it necessarily harder in a good way i don't know if I that just... makes the skill ceiling high or anything but like I think that because the price is already so high in Valorant for an op, it's yeah. it's okay to make it a bit better. I mean, Maybe, I hate the op. I mean, I, I hate know. all ops. Honestly, I hate getting picked I up love at any angle. So I just got to yeah. say here, my bias here is the op should just not exist. And we go to five-man rifles. All that's fine with me, too. Honestly, if you're going to, like, that's the thing. Because I can't use it how it is right now, just get rid of it. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah. While we're there, just make the Marshall useless, too. Yeah, like, okay, how about we just, instead of nerfing the Bucky, how about we nerf everything else yeah. and then just go to a Bucky yeah, center? Yeah, that's great. That sounds fine to I me. I mean, at least in, I gotta say, the AWP is just unwieldy for me in, in Valorant. At least in, in CS. Valorant, if yeah. I, at least in CS, if I picked it up, I could use it. I was mostly a rifler, but, you know, if I needed to pick up an AWP, I could use it. In Valorant, it seems like... Boy, this is an expensive weapon that's uh, very severely situational. I can't use this for anything. Yeah, I don't know. and I mean, quick patch, Dari in the chat making a great point. Valorant will be fun when it's Quake. I agree, but there is one crucial difference between Valorant and Quake, and that is that Valorant has tournaments, which I will use as a transition to talk oh, about the no other way. thing we need to touch on. That's um, unreal, dude. I uh, know, really a ha-ha, I see what you did there. Um, we do have to also touch on something pretty massive going on here at the bu um oh, gaming can't you know, believe we didn't talk community. about this last stream this is so we exciting. really didn't touch on it i will say in the past we've talked about the different leagues that we play in you know nacs csl cea um i'm involved in a production capacity in nacs that's going to play off soon too as well i will be um producing maybe observing and casting some of those matches and we will be the a team will be playing in some of those matches so keep an eye out for that uh starting this friday i believe we have nacs but more importantly on Saturday, we have a in-house, essentially, um, tournament that we are hosting. Uh, it's actually part of a much larger tournament called the Red Bull Campus Clutch. Let me see if I can't bring up that so that we can talk about it. Do you know that much about it, Philip? Like, can you give us a rundown? I don't know how much you know about it. Eight teams will enter. One team will exit. Um, this is true. Actually, it'll be more like six, but fair play. Yeah, so I think how many people have signed up for it? Like five teams and like ten solos? I don't know Something how many. Something like that? Um, here. We have, a, we have a, from now, a significant amount of players, I believe. You know, well, let me search it up on Faces, maybe. Yeah, I can the actually entire, tell you entire, in a sec. Yeah, so the entire point is you basically sign up either as a team or a partial group or as an individual and you get matched up with people and you compete in a single elimination, uh, I think, yeah, it's all BO1, single elimination style, except for the finals, which is best of three. Um, and you yes. compete through, I believe, two rounds of single elimination, and then the finals is, yeah, is, finals is uh, best of three. Best of three, I think, yeah. So what this actually is, is that it is part of, I don't know, people keep saying the voice is, oh, Philip's voice, yeah. Okay, that makes sense, what you said earlier, makes sense. Um, what I will say, disregard that, this is actually part of something much larger. We're talking about specifically this event because obviously it's the one that we're going to participate in. But what this actually is, is it's part of the Red Bull Campus Clutch, which is a series of almost global events that Red Bull is hosting oh, yeah. uh, for university students. So what they're doing, and there's a nice little map down here that we can look at, is they are hosting uh, tournaments across the entire world. I don't know if this actually shows other countries. Let's see if I can 
Oh, it sure does. Oh. Um, they are hosting yeah. tournaments around the entire world um, in universities, and then they're taking the winners of those, and eventually uh, they're going to all fly out, I guess, somewhere in person in LAN and play a global, international, best collegiate Valorant teams tournament called the Campus Clutch. So because the U.S. is so much larger than a lot of these other regions, you'll notice Europe has a lot of slots as well. Um, but the U.S., the way that they've done it is they've split it up by states. So I don't think all the states have a qualifier, but most yeah. of them are basically hosting a couple tournaments at different universities. Specifically for Massachusetts, we have one being hosted by Boston University, one at MIT, one at UMass Amherst, and one at Northeastern. Um, and Northeastern and BU being the more prevalent uh, Valorant teams out of those four. Yeah, that's what right. this means is that the anybody from BU can sign up to the BU tournament. Similarly, anybody from Northeastern can sign up from the Northeastern tournament. And then the winner of each of these tournaments will go to a statewide, like regional tournament. So all the best teams in Massachusetts will play each other. And then the best team out of Massachusetts will go to a national tournament, which I think Red Bull might actually fly you out for so you play on land, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, they'll go Playing to the, on land, like a national on, one. Well, still on land. On yeah riot servers yeah yeah um go to a national tournament and then the best team out of that will go to an international one which is the actual campus clutch um so we are lucky enough to be hosting the bu gaming clubs or you know boston university tournament with the bu gaming club um and again, as I mentioned, that means anybody, not just from the A team and the B team, anybody that is a student, I think graduate students included at Boston University can sign up for this tournament. You can bring your friends, you can be of any skill level, you can sign up and just try your luck. And what's especially cool about this is it's actually going to be played somewhat in person um, at the balance patch, I guess, what would I call it? A land Internet center? Cafe. Yeah, Cafe. something like that. Um, yeah. Esports center, whatever they call it, um, which is basically just like an uh, yeah, like a land center esports cafe um, with a ton of great rigs that can play Valorant very well. Tons of great seating, and I presume, I mean, I know they host a lot of fighting game tournaments there, so they've got like caster areas and backdrops. And Red Bull is actually renting out, uh, I believe, somewhere between twenty-five and thirty-five seats for us to go in person there. You don't have to go in person, but you can if you're signed up, and it should be really, really cool. Um, to play in person against these other teams. That is happening this Saturday, April 10th, around 1 p.m. EST to around 7 to 8 p.m., depending on how many teams we have signed up. And as of right now, we have four full teams signed up, A team, B team, and two other teams from BU, um, as well as somewhere around 13 solos, um, which basically means if you don't have anybody to play with, you can sign up on your own and you'll get matched into a team um, on the day of the event or maybe a bit before. So we're looking at somewhere between six maybe even seven teams playing mostly in person yeah. for a chance to play nationally or at least regionally that's pretty cool i think yeah i can't wait to get uh, matched up against the a team and just <laughs> listen i'm more scared of korean snake all right like I'm, he's I'm, terrifying the siege b team is apparently um they're playing the wrong game that's what I, that's what they are they're playing the wrong game Let's find balance patch here as well, so I can show off the yeah, actual uh, place we'll uh, be playing. It's on uh, Commonwealth, 101031 Commonwealth Avenue. So it's near, it's like the Alston side of ca campus. Yeah, um, so it'll be pretty cool. I see I see some people talking in, uh, in the chats about possible guests. I don't know. I don't see why not. Um, the only thing you have to pay for, as far as I know, at balance patch is if you want to use an actual rig. I don't think there's like an entry fee. So I'm pretty sure anybody who wants to watch can come and watch. We will have some sort of production value as well. Uh, the eboard, as well as the Red Bull people, will be um, doing something of that sort. So there might be a stream going up. At the very least, there will be highlights and demos, um, VODs at the very least, uh, shared afterwards. So we can look at all the great action that happened. Maybe interviews with players. Hint, hint, there's some things in the works there. Um, which would no be pretty way. cool. Um, yeah, I but, can't wait yeah. for this to be E League 2.0. This uh, the second best uh, esports tournament to ever occur in uh, Boston. I don't know. Balance yeah, match. here it is. But I am yeah. very excited to play this. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to see this. Have you ever played at a land, Philip? No, I haven't. The one I did, I contemplated playing at a um, at an internet cafe in Vietnam, like a few years ago. And then I just didn't go, unfortunately. But hey, that fair was enough. Fun.
I have played fun. it in an internet cafe before a couple times, but I've never played it like a full on land tournament. So this will definitely yeah. be very be interesting. Either. Just solo queue till I die, basically. I okay. kind of get it's that, unfortunately. Be, it's getting pretty excited. I'm gonna bring some of my. Uh, I'm gonna bring some of my gear because there's no way I can. Uh, I, I can't do it with the house gear. Can't do it with the house kit. For sure. It. And again, if anybody is watching this and wants to sign up, you can still. There is still time. Any players of any skill level can sign up. Uh, there is an announcement on the BU Gaming Club's Discord, which you can look at uh, for sign-up instructions. Otherwise, you can reach out to myself. You can see Gabriel TM9 um, in the overlay there. Uh, hashtag 0001 on Discord or any BU Gaming Club representatives, and they will help you sign up. It should be really, really cool. So if you have any interest at all, I would say sign up because it's not just about winning. It's it's just a great opportunity to play, you know? It's not about winning. It's about having fun. SpongeBob this is true. Games. Yeah, the that real is, uh, the real campus clutch tournament is the friends we made along the way. Yeah, again, only open to BU students, so you know, just this transfer here, just transfer here for a day or two if you really want to play. Ain't no that problem. seems like a good idea. It's no problem. Yeah, but uh, speaking of the teams that are going to be present there, let's just quickly give an overview of the event. Yeah. We have quite a hodgepodge um, signed up. Let me see if I can bring up the actual face it yeah. um, thing so we can look at it. Do hey, you want to? Who's on your Who's on your roster? You know what? Maybe our roster, ask... our yeah, roster is roster. pretty much what you'd expect. It's the um the A team roster. It's myself, Jason, who's Escalera, um Brian, Falsia, Daniel, DNL, and Optimum, um Owen. But I Optimum. see. We have an interesting roster here. Yeah, you guys are kind of special. You're running something different this time, right? Yeah. Uh, Bobber can't make it because he's a busy bee. So we stole somebody from your roster. From your yes. uh, sub roster we're gonna have fubi on board uh to fill in for bobber here and then the rest of the roster is just pretty normal it's myself dari uh missile and pystrom so we're gonna have a good time hopefully we don't get uh instantly matched up against the best seed <laughs> yeah so these a little uh... unfortunate we want to win a few before we uh we have to uh you know get gets into the shadow realm i mean well, so I'm this isn't even seated as far as i know team. it's just random so no. this will be interesting Dude, if it's random wise. and uh bro if it's random and the first opponent is a team that's gonna be that's so a bit sus. of a yikes it's okay we'll it's just forfeit so for sus. you it's fine we're gonna have to knock you out of the tournament that early dude it's gonna be so unsatisfying for sure hey then i get to cast though b team if you knock hey. us out i get to cast so there's that that's great could i incentivize you you know with to the... forfeit <laughs> so i can yeah. cast uh, i mean maybe these. what are you gonna offer these. me you take these oh a six pack of spoons i was hoping for something different oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> which we can't mention on stream um no anyway but uh what was i gonna say yes yeah, so that's the b team that signed up a team is pretty much what you expect optimum dnl escalera falsia and myself um i find it especially interesting to click on people who have played face it like cs face before it, yeah. because it gives you a bit of an idea um yeah like daniel has played a lot i've played quite a bit um yeah. the other I two mean, teams here <laughs> interesting names right uh probably not recognizable at a glance but they are terrifying i will tell victorious you that and what? yeah first what? and foremost What's... we have victorious uh which what is, is Oh, this wait, is the, team, the team, right? team. This is the R6 Rainbow Six Siege B team here at BU. Um, What's the other team then? And they have some terrifying players. Before we get to them, let me just quickly highlight. We have played against these guys before. They We scrimmed them once, uh, and it was very close. They took a map off of us, I'm sad to say. Um, and we we won on the other map. Um, hey. I will be anti-striding you if you're watching this, so... Be aware. If you run anything almost, like that scrim, you will get anti-stratted. But we almost took a map off of you guys. This really man right here, Asian Snake, Korean Snake, he is crazy. It's gonna. Be, I'm interested in highlighting after this tourney the battle of the Killjoys, if possible, because I want to see who's the best Sentinel that we have Wait, at this he tourney. He plays Killjoy. He plays Killjoy, and he's terrifying. Yeah, my setups are gonna have to get interesting these days. Yikes. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, but then the other t the other team that we talked about, Aiden Jet OP. This is made up of the Boston University, I believe. I don't know if we is have multiple League of Legends team? team, but it is one. It is a league team. Yeah, that's a league team. No way. Um, yeah, are we've they, got Zingbet here. I'm actually so excited to know, like how <laughs> Zingbet isn't even um, on the core, like r like like gotcha. playing roster of the the league team. He's the coach, so he's great at his game, and he plays Valorant on the side. Um, but it'll gotcha. be interesting to see. Yeah, Quantum confirming in the chat, part of the league team. 
we actually had Zingbet here as a guest um, previously. Uh, I think it was last episode, right? Joe Marino? Yeah, yep, we did. Joe Marino. So you can go back and watch that, episode six. If this is the VOD, uh, I, I'm going to say I'm, I'll put like a little thing up somewhere, up there probably, you so you can click remember. on it. <laughs> yeah, somewhere up there. I'm not going to remember, but you can find it. Um, but yeah, great guy. Super interesting team to play against here. I'm also getting confirmation. Boop, 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 boop. Production is telling me that uh, Ali is, this guy right here, is actually part of the Rocket League team. So oh, that's terrifying. No. We have, we are now, this tournament is made almost 50% up. In terms of confirmed teams, this tournament is 50% made up of Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, and League players. So <laughs> that is that is really funny, and if they end up actually steamrolling the tournament, I guess they should just become the Valorant team. Oh no! Frankly, like I'm 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 hanging up my my hat. Like uh, I'm done. <laughs> if if we, if we lose a map to them, like I'm done. Um, so we'll see. Uh, it'll oh, be interesting. If you lose a map to them, you actually are done. Unless well, it's I guess the if finals. it's in the final, it could be if in the finals. Finals, you have another chance. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a bunch of solos signed up, which is exciting to see. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see too. I don't know if we can check that here. Um, I can't actually hear. I'll just quickly how... leave the tournament with the BU team so that I can show you how many solos are signed up. Bro, this um, man really just said goodbye. Yeah, if I sign up as a solo, it tells me that 14 players are queuing. You can barely see that on the right side. I can't really like move it for you guys, but yeah, there are 14, 14 players queuing and there are another... Oh wait, next team matchmaking in two days. Oh, look at that. So it does tell me. So in two days, 17 hours and 56 minutes, which I guess would put it at actually like three days from now. So that's what, like the, the that's the 10th. Never mind. Yeah. So is there 14 um, players including you in the queue Yeah, that's right including now? me. So there's actually 13 solos signed up. Oh, so um, there's just going to be three people and then like nothing. What? Yeah, we'll see. How... If everybody shows up, all 13 of those solos, then unfortunately we won't be able to field the third team and three people might have to, you know, either sub or like sit out or something uh, but we'll we'll figure that out but yeah so this does confirm what i mentioned earlier that you will get matched as a solo on the day of the event uh right, let me yeah. quickly join back in as the yeah. actually team don't, don't worry about that don't worry about that don't worry I'll about do that it. not important i'll do it I'll um don't worry about it it's gonna be okay let me make sure i put the right roster in here all right great yes so definitely if you want to sign up if you have any interest in valorant at all as i just as you just saw like so many of these players aren't on the valorant team they're just playing for fun um i would definitely say check it out if you want to because it'll be really really fun it's hosted on face it as you can see it should be a good time and you have until yeah. the 10th i had apparently 10 a.m no wrong you have until the 10th at 12 55 um p.m to sign up so you have until day of until right before we start at 1 p.m do you think we'll get like two more people to sign up so that we don't have to say, well, these three people can't play? I guess that all depends on the people I mean, watching this stream, right? If you know yeah. anybody that you think might be interested in signing up, you know, reach out to them. So, interesting for sure. And I'm excited to play that. It should be really, really fun. Both from the content creation side, I'm going to be lugging. I've already told Joe this, but I've got like, let's see if I can find, I've got like tripods and gimbals down here and stuff. We're going to be lugging a ton of gear to try to get some cool shots and interview players and stuff like that. So even if you are just a bystander, who knows? Maybe you can get interviewed and talk about your favorite team <laughs> out of the League B team, <laughs> out of the League team, the R6 team, oh the Rocket God. League individual, and the two Valorant teams. You can tell oh us which of your God. favorite, yeah. which is your favorite. That's so funny. Yeah, it's like, it's like going up to somebody. It's like, yeah, I've been a huge Fnatic fan for like my entire <laughs> life. It's like, yeah, yes. I've been a huge uh, A-team fan for, like, <laughs> since I was born. <laughs> it's like... Actually, I'm a that's huge fan of so Zingbet. That's why I followed him to this Valorant tournament and not the League of Legends ones that he plays in. Uh, you know, that's how yeah. it is. Uh, but for sure, that'll be really, really cool. Um, do you have any closing thoughts about Red Bull, Campus Clutch, the tourney? Um, I think I pretty, we pretty much talked about all of it. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Today's the 18 B team rivalry is real right now. I I've saw been, Dari in I've the been, chat like spin some mad yeah. fire. Like mm. I've been barely, uh, I've been barely getting in my hours in Valo. So I think these next few days, just gonna grind a game or two, just to keep, yeah. you know, keep the blood flowing. Uh, and Dari is now immortal. I will tell you that he's now immortal. This it's is true. We literally can't lose. Like, give me a reason that we'll lose. Exactly. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> Yes, it's and over. just to confirm it's to, I don't know how to pronounce your name in the chat, but Lotisio, Lo, Lo Lotisio, something like that. Um, yes, if you sign up, but you can't make it in person, you can 100% play remote. So, yes, yep. you can do that. Um, Lotisio, dang, I said it right. That's crazy. 
All right. Um, that's the first time I've had like a crazy name in chat and I actually managed to say it. Anyway. Um, so I think with that, we've pretty much covered, I mean, we covered the patch notes. We covered the tournament. Is there anything else that we need to talk about, Philip? I don't think so. I think this, we got to wrap this one up. For sure. Does the chat have anything that he wants us to talk about before we leave? I think we have a couple more minutes, so we might as well. But if not, then we are pretty much ready to wrap up. I'll just keep blabbering on about random things for a couple seconds to give any questions to roll into the chat. Yes, Dari. Uh, Dari said he will be signing all BU jerseys. Um, we don't have any BU jerseys. Not even the players yeah. have BU jerseys. Um, but if you can sign my forehead, I would appreciate that. Um, I will never wash it again. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll wear a plastic bag <laughs> over my That's head. That's so amazing. You know, a cool um, thing would to do is to like buy a keyboard. Actually, we have a stipend from Corsair now. Buy a keyboard. From that's Corsair, true. Have everybody sign it, and oh, that's like, that would be so just cool. Just for the gaming club. Just like for the frame gaming it club. somewhere. Yeah. Frame it somewhere. Just like every single year, every time somebody is about to leave, you know, all the seniors just sign it. Oh, that would be awesome, Joe. If you can make that happen, please do. If not, I think I, I think we actually if not, I, I will have make a Corsair keyboard back there that we can sign. I will um, make it happen. Yeah, I am. We do have time to pull uh, some Corsair merch out of somewhere. And I will also mention while we're on the topic of Corsair, if you do attend in person, there is a solid chance that there is um, some Corsair or Red Bull stuff flying around. Just saying, some incentive to come in person. Dude, Red Bull, that's all I needed you to say, bro. I need more energy drinks. Uh, yes. It's, it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, 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 yes. I'm very excited too, but. What I'm not excited for is having to close out this show. Uh, I, 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 listen, we need to get a sponsor so I can make transitions like Linus, all right? Like, I, I really want to make Linus Tech Tips transition to, like, Glass Wire, but I can't. So instead, Sponsored I will have to settle. Corsair. We'll sail away just like a ship. Yes, this is, it's not a, I, I don't, we should probably rename this to the Corsair. Oh, I think I was supposed to have done that, actually. Because uh, we are now officially partnered with Corsair. So, well, I guess anyway, we're banned. They're uh, never with it's fine. Again. We'll do it next time. It's going to be great. This has been the unofficially Corsair Showstopper, BU Gaming Club's Showstopper podcast, the Valorant podcast. I'm your host, Gabriel Monka, joined as always by Philip Tran. And that is it for us this week. Catch us bi weekly talking about Valorant. So, next time will be the 21st, I believe, because uh, it's the 7th. So, yes. We will be here in the on the 21st, yeah. same time. Uh, when do we start? 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. EST, every other Wednesday. Catch us next time. It has been great. I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Down to just two players with a bomb down. Falsy finding three, four. Will we see the ace from Falsy this round?